YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and in this video i'm here to share my post game thoughts from the crazy crazy game we watched last night <laughs> oh that game was wild man shout out to the raiders because i certainly underestimated them i i, I did think that we were gonna see the week one ravens that we've been so used to seeing and we just been spoiled by and I thought this thing was going to be a blowout. I said 45 to 17. I was obviously dead wrong. Uh, and the Raiders, they went out. They earned it. They got the victory. They took care of business. And the Ravens just simply didn't. And when you think about it, something that's, um, I guess, is kind of like bittersweet almost. When you think about all the mistakes that the Ravens made, just a lot of the poor decisions that were made, uh, today by the staff and just for them to still have a shot to win this game in overtime like they they still had chances to win and for when their backs their backs were literally against the wall literally against the wall and they still ended up having a shot to win this game so that's that it, it was a frustrating game it was a crazy game a lot of emotions but again like I said shout out to the Raiders man they took care of business I was hoping to play uh, spoiler, hoping the Ravens would play spoiler to the Ra Raiders getting fans in that stadium, but they didn't. But it's all good. Again, it's one game. It's one game. This is a long and an extra long season because it's 16 games. Before, after this first loss, it will be 15 games left. But it's a long season, longer season because we got 16 games left. Um, anyway, where do we start? Um, offense. Let's start with offense. Uh, offensive line, obviously, all night was just a, a big problem. It was a big problem. Uh, both our guys on the end, uh, Ronnie Stanley and uh, Alejandro Villanueva, they were both getting dogged. They they were getting dogged all night. And one of the uh, so many people's concerns heading into this year, uh, especially like during training camp and stuff, so many people's concern was the offensive line. One, because they hadn't got time to play together and practice together because this guy and that guy were out and that guy was missing and da da da, da. Uh, And then there were concerns about when people actually did see them play, um, like Alejandro Villanueva. It was said that in training camp and in practice and stuff that he was getting beat, man. He was getting beat bad, even by a rookie, Adafi away. And we didn't know, like, whether that's to really just say, oh, Adafi away is nice like that, or Alejandro Villanueva is just struggling like that. Um, so in this game, it, it was just rough, man. It was rough literally all game long, my, my, mainly in pass protection. But it was it was so bad. Um, we, we saw a preview of this in the Washington football team game, and it was only one drive. And so it was a small sample size, but that small sample size, it showed us reality that this offensive line got a, a long way to go. Um, so that's something. And, and it's crazy because you almost feel like, like Ravens got to get it with these guys that they have right now. They got to figure something out because they don't have much cap space. Yeah, you can make some stuff happen, but you don't have much cap space. Um, so you're limited on what you can do. Now, um, this was another reminder that we really miss Nick Boyle. We, we miss you, Nick Boyle, because Nick Boyle served as an extra offensive lineman. Uh, we know this dude's blocking skills are out of this world for a tight end, and we miss you. So get well soon. Uh, <laughs> we, we just miss you, man. Please come back. <laughs> Boy, Tyree Phillips, he won the starting left guard job, and now the starting left guard job is back up for grabs again because he got hurt. Hopefully, it's nothing long term. I'm sure we'll find out sometime today what the status of his injury is. It obviously hasn't come out yet. It's 9.05 a.m. right now, so um, we'll find out about Tyree later on. Uh, but hopefully, like I said, it's nothing too bad. Um, Lamar Jackson in this game. He was trying, man. Those two, those two fumbles, they are inexcusable, though. Those two fumbles, you, you cannot do that. They are inexcusable. And then on the, on the second one, um, he just, when he fumbled the ball, he just sat there. He was frustrated, but you got to finish the play. You got to finish the play. Because even though you lost the ball, you can't just sit there, man. You got to finish the play. So the two fumbles, they were big uh, as a part of this game. 
as far as Lamar passing, he did a good job passing tonight. Um, and he was trying, boy. I, we, one thing that was missing from this game, the downfield shots. I think he only took three. He only took three. One was uh, the same pass that he threw to De Duvernay uh, from the Washington football game, but it sailed out of bounds, and it was way past Duvernay anyway. Um, and another one was to Mark Andrews, where he just threw it a tiny bit too tiny, tiny bit too far. Tiny bit too far. It was like so close, but then the, and the other one was to Sammy Watkins. Those are the only three deep shots that I remember. Um, if there were other ones, please let me know, but those are the only ones that I remember. So not many deep shots this game, uh, but at the same time, how can you take any deep shots if you don't have any time to throw the ball? So again, offensive line is is big, man. It is a uh, big concern. But Lamar looked good. His passes look good. Um, he made good decisions, as he always has. Even though people try to run a narrative that he doesn't, but as he always has, he continues to go through his progressions. I don't know why people say that he doesn't go through his progressions, but anyway, um, so that yeah, that was Lamar. He he didn't scramble much. Uh, what did he pass like two hundred some yards? Um, but yeah, he as as a, with his game, it was fine minus the fumbles. That you can't do that. That's Especially close games like these, like fumbles are inexcusable any game. You can't fumble any game, but they certainly don't help uh, in a in a game that's like this. Um, so he got to clean that up, and he got to clean up that tweet that he tweeted last night about them fumbles because that sure wasn't team keep it clean. But anyway, um, Tyson Williams. I I remember watching the game, and I was like, man, Tyson Williams just from the eye test, he just looked. So much better than Latavius Murray. Now, again, Latavius Murray is his first game. He's not too familiar with the Ravens system. I get that. But Tyson Williams just, he looked better. That's what it is. He looked better. And in the first half, Tyson, of course, scored that beautiful touchdown. It was a great run. Um, and they, they ran him a decent amount of times. But then in the second half, I was like, man, I don't notice him much. Like, what happened to Tyson Williams? What's going on? And yeah, he did have that that fumble where he I think it was a, he he caught the ball and he fumbled the ball out of bounds. Um and then there was the pass that initially when Lamar threw it, I'm like, "Man, Lamar, you really missed Tyson Williams wide open. What a bad pass." But then team keep team keep it clean let me know uh in the live stream, which I appreciate everybody coming through to. But team keep it clean let me know like, "No, Lamar was actually leading him. Tyson Williams just stopped." And I was like, "Oof. I didn't know that cuz I, I hadn't even seen that." Um, but in the, uh, what, in the second half, he had two carries. First half, he had one, I mean, first half, he had seven carries, uh, 64 yards and a touchdown. And he had two catches for 23 yards, but in the second half, so well, second half and overtime, he had two rushes for one yard and one catch for six yards. So you just completely stopped using him. And again, he looked a lot better than Latavius Murray did. Granted, Latavius Murray even got that touchdown, but still, it took him it took him a little while to get there. Latavius Murray, he was, he was he was pushing, but Tyson Williams to me just looked so much better. And and of course, he's more comfortable in the system too. But why did we just stop abandoning Tyson Williams? And it's not like we can be like, oh well, the the Ravens were down, so maybe that no. What they went in the halftime? What was it like? Fourteen three, I think. What was the score at halftime? I don't even remember, but Ravens were up. And then they and then they got the ball. They got the ball uh back after halftime. So it was like, come on, man. What is going on? Um, but he did struggle in pass protection. On Lamar's, I think the second fumble, I want to say it was the second fumble, uh, Tyson Williams just completely like whiffed on the block. Completely missed the guy. Um, and it's crazy because in preseason, he looked a lot better in pass protection, but tonight it was a struggle. And I know some people made the comments, they were like, hey, this is, this is where Le'Veon Bell would be great at because he is good at uh, pass protection. So um, Tyson Williams had nine carries last night, a total of nine. Latavius Murray had ten. So I, I really hope this – and, of course, you, you – it just gave me flashbacks, and I know it's just a, it's one game, but the way that they 
divvied up the carries, it just gave me flashbacks of last year when they did this with uh, Ingram, J.K., and Gus, where they didn't go with the hot hand. They 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 stopped going with the hot hot hand, and they just they did they wanted to divvy up the carries evenly. Like, okay, we don't want to make anybody mad. Let's let's just give everybody their fair share. And again, Tyson Williams looked a lot better than Latavius Murray did. And that's not I'm not taking a shot at Latavius Murray because again, I know he's not familiar with the system too much. It ain't been long since he's been here. But Tyson Williams just he looked so much better, a lot more explosive, a lot quicker. He was just fitting so much better last night. And the Ravens just stopped. They just stopped. Uh, and that's on Greg Roman, man. That's on Greg Roman. There were some questionable decisions like the fourth down play with Latavius Murray where they didn't get it. I just, I remember watching the play live and I was thinking, man, I know they're not going to give it to Latavius Murray. I know Lamar's going to keep it and then either try to look for his own lane or, or, or throw to somebody. But they gave it to Latavius Murray and I was like, whoa. Why wow, they did they they really did that? I, I didn't like that at all, man. Cause I just thought he last night to me he didn't look like a threat. And again, I gotta repeat it because I know it he's not familiar with the system, he's not comfortable in the system, but he just didn't look like a threat to me last night. Um so I just I felt like Tyson should have had more opportunities. Was it that the fumble, John Harbaugh was like, you know what? Nope. Mm -mm. You you wanna fumble the ball even though it went out of bounds? Nah, I'm not having that. You you're out of my game. Could that have been it? Possibly. Because we know, like, Harbaugh, if you fumble, even if they don't recover the fumble, if you fumble, depending on who you are now, because Harbaugh, <laughs> is it you, depending on who you are, if you were an undrafted guy and you fumble, yeah, you, you're done. You a lower round pick and you fumble, yeah, you're done. But if you high pick or you a quali high quality free agent or whatnot, you get a pass. And it's true. We've seen it before. I never forget where uh, Mike Wallace. I forgot. I think it was a regular season game. I forgot whether regular season or preseason. I think it was a regular season, though. But Mike Wallace, a receiver they signed in, uh, as a free agent, he had fumbled the ball. And I'm like, they, they can't take him out. They ain't going to take Mike Wallace out. You ain't going to bench Mike Wallace. It was like, no, nah, of course they didn't. But Janarian Grant, who was a shifty, shifty punt return, explosive guy, fumbled, gone. Cyrus Jones who had gave the Ravens some nice returns, uh, nice punt returns. He started fumbling, cut, done, done. So it all just, all just depends on where you are sort of in the pecking order. Um, so maybe that's why, I was about to say, that's why Janarian Garrett, that's why Tyson Williams didn't see much action in the second half. Even uh, Trent Cannon, in the one run that he got, he, boy, that boy took off, man. It got called back now because of Eric Tomlinson. They said he was holding. But Trent Cannon, he, he looked even better than Latavius Murray, too. He ain't been around long. But just that the explosiveness, man. That explosiveness is big. Um, back to Greg Roman. And, and my apologies in advance because I feel like we're going to go on for a long time. But we got a lot to say and a lot to talk about. Uh, but back to Greg Roman. He, in this game, is... It's just, it can be very frustrating when there's such a lack of adjusting because we saw literally from jump, from start to finish in five quarters, we saw the offensive line struggling all game long. Crosby was beasting, uh, unique in Gakwe, he was beasting for the time that he was out there. Carl Nassib, he got on in, he got in on the action too. They were just having a day, man. That defensive line was having a day. And it's crazy because we we went into this game like thinking, all right, it's going to be the Raiders offensive line that ends up being garbage. Man, these boys, they they missing guys. Richie Incognito. Uh, they, they got so much inexperience. These I think combined, all five of them combined got like a total of like 64 starts in the NFL. So I'm like, ooh, these Ravens about to feast. Nope. It looked the other way around. Looked the other way around. But anyway, with the offensive line struggling as much as they were, li literally from start to finish, you would think that the offense, they would try to counter that. And they did a little bit because they came out in the spread formation, empty backfield. 
So that sort of spread that, well, that's an attempt to sort of spread the defense out. So if they pressuring you, if they sending guys and whatnot, you spread them out. It's like, okay, we, we got to take a step back a little bit. Didn't work. Um, but this, I, I thought, I was hoping. And I know we only do one per month, so I, but I was still hoping that they would, they would hit their quota last night. And I was hoping that they would actually exceed their quota. Because I think that would have helped, but they did not run that one screenplay. Not one. This is something that we've been talking about for years, man. For years. Whether the Ravens are winning, whether the Ravens are losing, they just do not implement the screen game into their game, and that could do wonders for them. It's something so simple. It, it doesn't, to me, it's, it's, it's just, it's the simple things with the Ravens. So many times it's the simple things. And... We um we did see the, the the passing game. It looked better. It looked more competent. It looked better, but the, it's just the simple stuff. Little additions here and there, man. Little additions here and there will go a long way, super long way. Um, now uh oh, what was I about to say? Um, Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews, he had a pretty quiet game, and when it was crutch, crunch, crutch time, crutch time, crunch time, clutch time, he ain't show up. Perfect pass from Lamar to Mark Andrews in overtime. He just he let he let uh, Jonathan Abram knock it out. Let him knock it out, and I was just like, man, this is the this is the rap that he has. Because, again, we know he makes a lot of plays, man. Makes a lot of plays. But it's the big moments, man. The big moments in games, that's when Mark Andrews just, sometimes it can be a struggle, man. I don't know what it is. It seems like a lot. I was just talking to my guy JT a little minute ago. And something that he brought out, he said, it seems like this team, a lot of it is just mental, man. It's mental. It's mental. And I could see that because, like I said, I, I feel like it's just so much simple stuff that could be fixed. It's, it's simple solutions to a lot of their problems. Simple stuff. But sometimes it seems like they overthink stuff. And it's like, no, you ain't got to do all that. Something that we have been hearing this offseason season. And I know it's just the first game, but I don't remember seeing not one play like that. But something that we have been hearing this offseason from Greg Rome, yeah, we're going to have Lamar under center more. Going to have him take snaps under center. And it's like, oh, okay, let's go. Because, yeah, the pistol formation is cool, shotgun is cool, empty is cool. But under center, if you got them taking plays under center or calling plays under center, playing under center, then you would be able to, uh, that would diversify your offense that much more. That would, that would make it wide open that much more, what your offense can do. That much more. Nope. They didn't do it. Didn't do it. So, it was just like, again, it's one game, but just to not, to not see one snap on the center. And again, let me know if I missed it. Cause I, but I sure don't remember not one. Not one. Hollywood, he had a good game. He had a crazy catch for uh, that catch, that little one-hand pick it up off the ground catch. Um, that was wild. Uh, obviously, the touchdown play from Lamar and him was just amazing. It was just crazy. Sammy Watkins. Overall, he had a pretty good game. Uh, made his impact right away with the Ravens. Um, he did have a couple of drops, uh, but he certainly made up for it with some big plays. Uh, the yak that he was getting, uh, the deep pass that he caught. With Lamar through that deep pass and it was coming to Sammy, I was scared. Like straight up, I was, I was scared. I didn't know what to expect, though. I did not know. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, man. Let's see. And he caught it, though. And I was like, oh, yes, let's go. So shout out to Sammy Watkins, man. Um, Prochet, 
I wasn't hardly out there. Tylen Wallace, I don't think he was. I don't think he really got in on offense at all. I don't remember seeing him on offense at all. He certainly didn't have any catches, obviously. Uh, Devin Duvernay, he was out there uh, quite a bit. Um, Josh Oliver, he was out there a little bit. Didn't didn't do anything. Lamar did throw him that one uh, pass in the end zone, but it. Ooh, he would it, he would have got whacked if he would have caught that. Um, Tomlinson, again, he was just used in that Nick Boyle role. Uh, yeah, that's that. Latavius Murray, again, he got his touchdown. He just he just looked, didn't look explosive. Um, but again, hopefully it was just because he wasn't comfortable. But but that no, he's not really an explosive runner like that. He's a um, he's he's a north south guy, but he's like he's like a power back. He runs really high. Um, but yeah, he's not really too explosive. He he got he get you them yards. Like if he got good blocking and just again north south, he got you. But yeah, last night definitely it wasn't his night. Despite the touchdown, but it wasn't his night. Um, and yeah, that's that would be everybody on offense. Uh, special teams before we get to defense. Um, special teams. Justin Tucker, he's the best man. He is the best. Um, just the, the clutch factor, the consistency, he's the best. That Bills game, our last game that counted before this one, obviously an anon anomaly. Uh, the wind was blowing like crazy, like crazy, where he missed them two field goals. It's like, that was so weird, man. That's, that, that game was just off, man. So much off stuff in that game. But anyway, um, he did a phenomenal job. Sam Cook, uh, he did a great job pinning the Raiders. Shout out to Tylen Wallace um, for downing that punt inside. I think inside the definitely inside the ten. Maybe it was like at the five or the seven yard line. Don't even matter though. But that was good. Uh, kick returns. Devin Duvernay, um, he was doing his thing, but on punt returns, Devin Duvernay, and I was I was very like a little surprised that they left him out there. Uh, even after he fumbled that punt return. But Harbaugh, hey, well, we, we agree on something here, Harbaugh, because I told y'all that with me, when it came to punt returns, I would rather have somebody that was explosive back there rather than just somebody safe. And Devin Duvernay, his hands are good, but again, he dropped the one last night. James Rocher, he ain't dropping that. Well, he might, but nah, he ain't dropping that. But Devin Duvernay, he'll give you a chance. He'll give you a chance for an explosive play at the, in the return game. James Rocher, he won't. Because his hands, they certify, man. But his speed is not. So, um, I, I like them having Devin Duvernay back there. And John Harbaugh must too, because again, he did not bench him after that fumble. And I was like, oh, okay, because I thought, ooh, uh oh, you better not, you better not get in the doghouse, Devin. Um, but yeah, they got too much injuries and all that to put Devin in the doghouse, man. You, you, you can't afford that. Uh, but special teams, they, they were pretty good, man. And even on the kickoff coverage against the Raiders, they had Henry Ruggs back there because they were just looking for a spark because he wasn't getting involved in the, uh, in the offense early on. Um. But man, it's oof. It's crazy, man. Um Defense. Oh, defense. Wow. Where do where do we start? Um the pass rush. Wink was just like Wink was like, man. I'm 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 gonna send four. Then he started looking around like that. He's like, I I'm just gonna send four at first. And you know he was just so giddy because Sending four is not his thing. He was just so excited. He's like, I got to send six. I got to send seven. I got to send more. 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 So initially, he started off with just four. And wasn't getting home. So he was like, all right, <laughs> throw that out the window. We done. Everybody go. Everybody go. And that's cool sometimes, but literally all the time, Situational football, man. Every game is not going to be the same. There's going to be some games where that works. There's going to be other games where that doesn't. 
And you just you just you just gotta adjust accordingly, man. Yesterday, again, they they lost in overtime, so they had chances, but felt like yesterday, both offense and defensive side of the ball, it was there was a poor poor adjustments being made. Poor adjusting. Um because yeah, they just both Greg Roman and Wink, they they just needed to adjust better. I'm not up here, oh, fire Greg Roman or fire Wink, but they, they certainly got to do better, and they, they got to do better fast because you got Kansas City coming in the crib next week. So I would think, oh, could, we'll talk about that later, though. But anyway, um, Derek Carr had a phenomenal game. Phenomenal game And and of of course Yeah there is An interception On his stat sheet But it was by no means His fault at all That I was just watching The uh, the replay of that play This morning And that was a beautiful route By Willie Sneed It was a beautiful route Should have been a touchdown Beautiful route Perfect throw by Derek Carr And Willie Sneed Just dropped it And Hollywood tweeted him He was He tweeted him like Yo man you still You playing for You playing for us you still with us, really? And that's what it looked like, man. Um, but he, uh, oh, I just wish we could have capitalized, man. And that that was Ravens' problem, man. Not capitalizing. That was another problem that they faced last night. Not capitalizing. Um, but yeah, Derek Carr, he played really good, man. Stepped up in the pocket a lot. Avoided uh, avoided sacks for the most part. Even when when pressure would get there a little bit, um, he he just stepped up, did a phenomenal job of doing that all game. Uh, did a phenomenal job finding his guys, giving his guys chances, um, taking some risks, taking some risk. Uh, he he did a good great job by Derek Carr, man. Again, shout out to the Raiders, man. They took care of business, and I know they they got some things that they probably concerned about on that end too. Because again, the game went to overtime, so both both teams could have won, both teams could have lost. Uh, both teams did got had did things had things that they did great. Both teams had things that they did poorly. Um, Josh Jacobs he came into this game sick, um, and he he was like up and down with his play. He did uh, have the touchdown, but he did he he didn't look look himself. So he definitely wasn't one hundred percent. There were a lot of times when he would come out of the game, um, but he just yeah he didn't. He didn't look himself, but obviously <laughs> what he was last night was enough for them to win. Um, but, yeah, so he'll I'm sure he will enjoy resting today uh, and maybe even on Tuesday. But Drake, King and Drake, he came in and made some plays. Um, they had him involved in the passing game a bit, too. Uh, so that was good for them. But really, forget all that other stuff, man. Darren Waller. Darren Waller. This guy, Darren Waller, just, it. that was the most frustrating, one of the most frustrating parts of the game last night. Probably the most frustrating part for me. Well, offensive line was extremely frustrating too, but Darren Waller, man. We know who Darren Waller is. Ravens know who Darren Waller is specifically because they're the ones that drafted him. Um, drafted this six six wide receiver with all this speed, but again, Ravens. When it comes to tall wide receivers, Ravens don't know what to do with them. They get lost in the mix. They like, oh, this guy's over six foot two. We don't know what to do. It have every time. Guys over six foot two, Ravens don't know what to do at wide receiver. Never fails. Never fails. Um, so they uh they they transition him to tight end. And he started coming along as a Raven, but then obviously all the other stuff happened. But then, <clears throat> excuse me, then he got cleaned up and whatnot. And Raiders grabbed him. I think he was on Ravens practice squad or something. Um, but John Gruden loved what he saw from him, picked him up, and boom, rest was history. So knowing that history, especially as a as a coach in the NFL, I really thought that Wink was just going to have a plan for Darren Waller. I really did. But Brandon Stevens, there was some time where he did all right on him. He did good on him. But there was other. Yeah, he actually did pretty good on him. But they didn't hold him, man. 
they didn't hold him with Darren Wall or somebody in the live stream they mentioned they were like man you gotta chip this guy every single play and that's true cause it, it just disturbs the timing and the, 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 the connection with him and Derek Carr it throws it off just a little bit just a little bit but no they did it a tiny tiny bit but they didn't do it consistently um he just all game. I think he had like twenty one targets, something crazy like that. Crazy amount of targets, and it was just like, wow. We're not gonna, we're not gonna look at that. You got me beating up the mic out of frustration. Uh, but I was like, we're not gonna uh, do anything about this guy. All night, literally all night long, from the start of the game till the end of the game, nothing. Um, so I was just like, man, this is just crazy. Uh, so they just did all night, all night. And it was like, man, it's somebody, anybody, anybody, but nobody. So he went off, of course. Um, and it just, I know so many people. They brought up, they're like, man, if Darren Waller went off this week, just imagine next week. But we, we'll talk about next week when we talk about it. That'll be soon, though. Um, it's just crazy, man. Just lack of lack of adjustments, man. Because in the first half, I even gave them, I gave them a pass. I'm like, okay, no, no, no problem. They, they, they dealt with Darren Waller the best they could. All right, second half adjustments, they're going to fix it. Nope. Nothing. In fact, it got worse. And Darren Waller didn't even do as much damage as he was supposed to because he dropped a lot of passes. He dropped like three, four passes. So it should have been worse. Should have been worse. But, um, who else? Uh, Ruggs. Ruggs didn't really do too much. He really didn't do anything until that last catch. That because he, he had one big catch uh, toward the end of the game. Um, who else? Uh, eighty nine. <clears throat> Excuse me, eighty nine. It looked like eighty nine had won the game. Uh, Chris Westry, to where he uh, in preseason, every preseason game, he made some nice plays, but he also gave up a big play every single preseason game. He gave up a big catch every preseason game. Same thing happened here. Just carried it over. He made some nice plays. Throughout the game, almost had a pick, made a nice tackle in the backfield. Um, he, he was doing his thing, but then he gave up that huge catch at the worst time. But shout out to Brandon Stevens for effort. Shout out to him for effort. And, and that's something that we got to talk about now is just effort. Um, that play could have been a touchdown, but Brandon Stevens made the tackle. And the guy, his 89's knee was down and the ball hadn't crossed the plane yet, so they got stopped at the one. Derek Carr tried to QB sneak the following play. Nope, Ravens stopped it. They stopped forward progress. Uh, then the Raiders got a false start, so that backed them up five yards. And then on the third down, that was the Willie Sneed play. There, Willie Sneed ran a perfect route. Derek Carr threw a perfect pass. The ball went flying up in the air. Um, it went flying up in the air. And then Anthony Avery came down with it. Pick, but you know, Ravens obviously, they, they couldn't take advantage of it. They didn't take advantage of it. And then they gave the ball right back. Lamar fumbled the ball. Um, but effort, Brandon Stevens, he saved the game because had he given up on that play, game would be over. It'll be over, but it wasn't. Um, Marlon Humphrey. Overall, for 99.99% of the game, he was amazing. This guy is Amazing. Amazing. Whoever he was on, they weren't making a big play. Whoever he was on, then whether it was Ruggs, whether it was Waller, whether it was Renfro, whoever it was, they were not making a big play. And a lot of times they weren't even catching it. But there's only one Marlon Humphrey. So Derek Carr was trying him, but it wasn't working. He even had that he even had the interception, but he didn't know it was an interception. And I know, I'm sure looking back at the film, he'll be frustrated, but live, it was like, he, he ain't even know. 
He was just uh, celebrating. He didn't even realize. And live, I, I didn't even realize. I was like, oh, I, I thought it was just an incompletion. I thought the ball hit the ground. But he had it. He had it. That would have been some good field position, too. But that play at the end, the very last play, I, I just couldn't, man. I couldn't. I, and I've seen people say, oh, man, it's because Marlon was tired. Oh, man, it's because the defense was tired. These guys have been playing in four quarters, and then they played overtime, too. Oh, man, they you got to give them a pat. No, man. He gave up on that play. And so many people are like, oh, man, well, Zay Jones, he had all that separation on him. He had him beat. And there was no way Marlon Humphrey was catching up with that. The play was not over. The ball was not caught. The play was not done. That last play was inexcusable, man. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. He gave up, and I. And some people, oh man, no! Well, the the safety the safety chipped him on accident, so that created all this separation. Why should he chase him for no reason? Nope. Because you never know what could happen. Again, the play had not been made yet. The the wide receiver could have fumbled the ball, could have bobbled the ball. He could have dropped the pass. He could have done so much. Could have happened. But Marlon Humphrey just stopped. He literally just stopped. 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 I saw some people saying, "Oh, what the? Marlon Humphrey did that because because uh, he had he had a bet on the Raiders, so that's that's why he stopped. He wanted to win some money." <laughs> I was like, "Oh boy!" But that was the most frustrating part for me last night. Not even not even that the Ravens lost, not even that the offensive line. Uh, well, those were frustrating things, and not even a Darren Waller, even though all three of those things were frustrating. That Marlon that Marlon Humphrey play just had me like so confused. And I was just like, what? What is, what was that? What was that? And I was just like, I, 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 I couldn't believe it. Because I'm like, no, not Marlon Humphrey. Not $100 million cornerback. Not Hump. No, no way. It's, that, this can't be. But it was. Um, but other, besides that, he had a phenomenal game. Uh, the pass rush... They couldn't get there. All, all the blitzes, they weren't getting there. Um, just wasn't, it was, it, they, they weren't doing that thing last night on the pass rush, man. Uh, Justin Houston, early on in the game, he looked really good, but then he, like, disappeared after that. Adafi away, uh, he had a really nice sack, and he showed that speed that we need. Um, so he needs to be out there more. He needs to be, and I know he's a rookie, but he, he needs to be out there more. And we have some different combinations that we can uh, use as far as pass rush. They just got to find the best fits, man. They got to find the best fits. And they also got to, because uh, Unique, I know my guy uh, from Slicing Rice, Matt, he brought it out last night about Unique Ngakwe's comments on uh, being a pass rusher for the Ravens because he said they – they put you on the field, and then they keep taking you off. It doesn't allow you to get into a rhythm. Yeah, it's true, man. It's like a gift and, cur and a gift and a curse of having good depth uh, at, at, at the pass rush, at outside linebacker and whatnot. It's a gift and a curse because, yeah, they want to have a good rotation, have guys fresh, but at the same time, you also want guys to be able to get into a rhythm. And that's what anything you're doing. That's why I remember um, with Joe Flacco, when the Ravens first drafted Lamar, um, and Joe Flacco, there'll be a lot of drives where he'd be like, ooh, yikes, what's, what's going on? We ain't got no rhythm. But then there would be some drives where Joe Flacco's moving the ball downfield, moving it, moving it, moving it. Then they'd be like, boom, all right, Lamar, come out. Come, come, come here. All right, Flacco, you go to the wide receiver. And I'm sure for Flacco, that's, he was like, what? What What you want me to do? Like, I'm, I'm in the rhythm. We moving here. Like, well, I'm sure that was going on in his head. He didn't say it out loud, but. And that's really with any quarterback. I mean, any player, but especially quarterback. Quarterback, what if the quarterback, they're driving down the field, then you're like, oh, come out. We're going to take you out. Bringing the back up. It's like, come on, man. But that's why I, I, I could completely understand Yannick Ngakwe on that. Because a, a pass rusher, he may be getting a feel for that offensive lineman. Oh, what, what works against this offensive lineman? How can I beat him? Let me try this move. Okay, no, let me try that. Let me try this rush. Let me just. But if you're not getting consistent opportunities against that offensive lineman, it's not going to work. Most likely. I mean, it can. It still can still possibly work. But 
you're going to have less knowledge of what can work against him because you have less experience. So, um, but yeah, all the blitzes and stuff. There was a lot of plays where there was no safety help over the top. Um, a lot of guys left in one-on-one situations. Um, a lot of Darren Waller being wide open. Uh, it, it 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 was just frustrating, man. Um, Ra- Raiders drops really saved the day for for the Ravens because Ra- Raiders had some they missed some opportunities because they were dropping the ball. They were dropping the ball. It's crazy. It actually was well. Ravens did have their drops too, but. Raiders were dropping the ball this game. I know Josh Jacobs, he had a drop. Uh, Darren Waller, he had a couple of drops. Um, but mm, 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 this game was something, man. Patrick Queen, he had a uh, pretty good game. He got a little quiet um, through different times of the game. Not that he can make a play every single play, but he had that nice sack where he disguised it perfectly, blitzed perfectly. It, it was just beautiful. Um, Malik Harrison. He had a uh, he had a really nice tackle. I think it was on was it on no it was on Josh Jacobs because Josh Jacobs came out of the backfield. Derek caught through the pass to him. He caught it uh, and Malik Harrison came out of nowhere. I don't even know where he was at. He came out of nowhere. Wow. Um, I thought it was gonna be a big game for him going against Josh Jacobs, but <coughs> excuse me, it wasn't a big game for Josh Jacobs because again he was he was sick, so he was off. Um, Renfro Renfro he was nice man. Nice little route runner, nice slot guy. Uh, he he did his thing. Uh, even caused a pass interference on Tay Tay. Um, so there was one pass interference on Tavon where Tavon just did not turn around. And I was like, oh boy. But then there was another pass interference they called on Tavon where it was a bad call. It was a terrible call. So that was, um, it was just frustrating. But in this game, the. Uh, the calls, they weren't even so bad, man. This officiating crew, it wasn't like anything like too crazy. Well, actually, no. The Tavon Young pass interference, the second Tavon Young pass interference call, the one that was in the middle of the field, not the one on Renfro, but the one on, I think is on 89, I think. That was a really bad call, but the, the Patrick Queen one, where they called uh, Unnecessary Roughness, I think. And, it, the, and Renfro ran into Patrick Queen. And they called unnecessary roughness on Patrick Queen. That was bad. That was terrible, actually. Um, but calls weren't the reason that the Ravens lost this game. They they weren't. Even with those bad calls, they 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 weren't the reason that the Ravens lost this game. Ravens got a bad call called for them as well. Um, mm, I cannot remember what it was though. I can't, it, it was something that was really bad. And I was like, and, and we said it on the live stream too. Like, that was a terrible call. Because it, it, it was a terrible call. I forgot what it was though. Mm, I forgot what it was. Uh, anyway, um, Anthony Averitt, he had a uh, he had a quiet game. So that's a good thing. No, of course, he had to pick too. But besides that, he had a quiet game. So he wasn't like getting picked on or anything like that. At least not that I noticed. Um, we talked about Westry, Brandon Stevens. Um, he was uh, he was up and down, up and down. And again, he's a rookie, third round draft pick rookie. Used to be a running back, used to be a cornerback. Now he's a safety slash cornerback. He's just a defensive back. Uh, he had an up and down game. Um, but yeah, man, uh, these Ravens they they certainly got some work to do. And like I said, it's it's the it's the simple stuff, man. I to me, I think it's the simple stuff that will make the biggest differences. Um, it's the simple adjustments, um, just simple fixes, little stuff here and there, man. They uh, again, this team is, is is capable of a lot, uh, but it's it's gonna take an all out effort because with the guys that are out, with the guys that are injured, um, everybody got to step up that much more. Uh, the players, um, they got to execute a lot better. Um, the coaches, they got to execute a lot better too. They got to execute a lot better, too. So, got the Chiefs next week. So, we stay in the AFC West. Um, so, that should be a uh, very, very good opponent there. Uh, coming to your crib. Uh, coming into your house. 
coming into your trap. Anyway, team, keep it clean. I love you all. I know this one went kind of long, but it was the first game of the season, and there was just there's a lot to talk about. And I probably ended up missing something, too, that I'm going to remember later on and be like, oh, man, why didn't we talk about that? But I, I can't think of anything right now. Like, I'm really trying to think if there's anything we were missing. I don't think it, I don't think there is anything right now, but I'm sure there will be something. Anyway, I love y'all. If you still made it to this part of the video, you can just let me know what your most frustrating part uh, for, of this game was for you. What was it that really had you like, oh, I can't believe it. And what did you like the most? We don't want to just focus on the negative. What did you like the most about this game? The thing I will say that I like the most about this game was, like I said, despite despite the struggles, despite the shortcomings, um, they they were still in it. They were still in it. Despite everything, they were still in it. Um, but, yeah, they this team, if they keep playing like that... <laughs> They ain't gonna be many games, but uh, they 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 got obviously got plenty of time to turn it around. Uh, but they need to like they got another immediate test like right away, right away from jump. You are going to be tested like crazy next week. How are you gonna respond, team? Keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We out.